All right, folks, Urban Sentinel here. Going ghost, ghost mode, disappearing into the background, that sort of thing. In terms of prepping and survival, especially in the current times that we're in now, it's not just simply keeping quiet, it's removing small traces, little tells that may key people into what you're doing. Now, if you've been, whether it's making videos, or having conversations with people about prepping, which in terms of building up a mutual assistance group, hopefully you're doing it with people that are on board with that, even if they're a little bit behind or a little bit ahead. If you're all moving in that same direction, that's one thing. But the casual conversations, the trying to urge and convince other people or even talk about it as a general subject, that's what we're gonna discuss. Now with going ghost, it really comes down to effectively we in our society are short attention span. We get distracted, something new comes along, that's where our attention goes, and unless something is repeatedly pounded and pounded into us, we tend to forget and relatively quickly. We become disinterested and we move on to the next thing. So if at work or at the school or at places where you normally go and you have conversations, if you're the one that usually brings up some type of parallel or some type of analogy to a current situation or a recent event and how prepping could have helped prevent or reduce whatever the problem was or how that would be an example that this is why you should start prepping. And I'm sure a lot of you get the eye rolls from people or you can see the body posture and language change of people like, oh boy, here comes a conversation about prepping. It happens. What you wanna do, completely scale it back pull it back. Now, initially, if you're always initiating a conversation, people will expect, here's something, here's a subject, here's a topic, and here comes this person, they're gonna to wanna to talk about prepping. And when you don't, that's going to get their curiosity. Some people will step full into the water and say, hey, did you hear about this? What do you, what do you have to say about it? Because they want that normalcy. That's part of their routine. You know, a subject comes up, you talk about prepping, they roll their eyes, they get a good chuckle about it, and they continue to go about their non-prepping lives. Other people may think, well, they didn't bring anything up and I'm not really feeling like having a conversation, and they'll move on. You start pulling back, little places here, little places there, changing up things that you do in your routine. One thing that you could do, and it's a small thing, and it's not gonna work for everyone, if you go onto Google Maps, pull them up, on your cell phone and you pick a business. Most businesses that take the time to get their information up on Google Maps and everything that's in there will have their hours of operation, but Google Maps also based upon customer input, reviews, and the locations that ping up on cell phones show the best times to go, basically the most busiest to the least busiest. Even something as simple as that as if you go to a place that it's only within your locality and it's the only place you can get to for a grocery store or for a bookstore, whatever it is, start looking at when they're least busy and going during those time periods. Start looking at alternate locations, going to that place where you're not the regular. If it's a chain business, effectively speaking, minus things on the left side being on the right side, you're going to find what you need there. But you want to stop being a familiar face to people. There are plenty of people when I go about my day that I recognize. I don't know who they are, I don't know anything about them, but on certain days, at certain times, you see the same people. It's almost like if you are waiting near a bus stop but you're never taking the bus, you will see the same people coming and going, you know nothing about them, but they're in your mind, they're in your memory, and when they disappear, you may get that initial, something's off, or there used to be this person that would come by at this time on this day, but I think they came by on a different day. But again, we as people in our society have been geared to become short attention span. It disappears, and that's what you want. You want to disappear, effectively speaking, from the tip of the tongue of most people that aren't in your circle, that aren't in the know. And yes, you're not gonna be able to wipe the memory of conversations with people around your office or wherever it is that you've talked about prepping, but when you talk about it less, and there's nothing wrong with a little deception, a little sleight of hand, if someone happens to ask, and you can get the sense that it's not a genuine inquiry, it's just they're looking for something to do, they want you to amuse them with your conversations about what you're doing. Simply say, oh, I haven't had the time this week, I've been busy doing this, or I've been 
doing this, doing anything other than actually prepping. Now, some of you are way ahead of the game. You've you know operated on a high level of security. You've kept it quiet. Most people have no idea what you're doing. And honestly, with the exception of you here watching on YouTube, even my friends that are actual preppers and that we have conversations about, they don't know that I do this channel. It's one of those things where it's you know not necessarily on a need to know basis, but I'm trying it out, seeing how it's going, and it's been going well. But again, it's those small little areas that you know you have to isolate and keep separate from another area. When you start pulling back your enthusiasm, when you start pulling back your inquiries, when you start reducing the number of sage bits of advice that you give, people will forget about that and they will move on to something else. You fill that spot, let them go off and do what they're going to do. Reducing what you visually present to them. Even when you buy things, take the time. If you're buying you know, some supplies and they come in a box and it doesn't even matter if it's nothing uh, that screams prepper, take the time, rip up that box, tear it up, get in small pieces, then throw it out less of a chance that it's going to catch the attention of someone on your block, in the neighborhood, wherever it is. If you can repurpose it and use it for extra storage, depending upon how much space you have, do that. You want to minimize your footprint and you want to reduce the, the viability of you being the first person that people think about should something happen. And especially in a desperate situation, you don't want them to automatically think, oh, I'm just going to go and they're going to help me out. Moving forward, there's going to be a lot more tension, a lot more unpredictable events to one extent or another. Some things you can kind of see how they're going to go and we, we expect a certain level of response and reaction. But with that being said, we as preppers, people that are looking at the whole picture as best as we can for everything that's out there, we're going to be in situations where people will start to look for us and not necessarily in a positive way. They're going to start looking for us because they didn't take the time to plan. So now they wanna take the shortcut by coming to us and getting what we have. It's a little bit harder when they know who you are and where you are. If you have people that may not necessarily be good friends and close family members, but they've known you long enough and know enough about you that if they're in a desperate situation, they're going to find you. It's those casual circles, those wide spaced out rings of people that you may have an association with, but really there's not much more than they recognize your face, they know your name, and you're associated with a location or an individual or some event other than that. You wanna reduce that, eliminate that. You don't want to be at the top of their list when they start to panic, when they're watching the news one night and it's a live broadcast and things are going sideways and upside down you don't want to be the first person they think, oh, I'm just going to find them. Now, a lot of this ghost mode does sound very similar to uh, the gray man principles, which is basically, you know, what you wear, how you move about, things like that. And there are parallels and similarities, but it's effectively removing the outside traces, the tells, the, the little signs and signals that would indicate, you know, that there's more behind the curtain as it were if you see a if you see a house and it's the only house on a block that has a chain link fence around the front and maybe as you're walking by the house you notice that there are small dig and bald patches here and there you don't see it you don't hear it but you're thinking they probably have a dog it's those small little signs that even though there's not a beware of dog sign there's not a dog house in the front there's not even a, a large steaming pile of dog poop you know that there's a dog. You want to remove those tiny little things, those subliminal little clues that stick into people's minds about you. Reducing those things, eliminating the conversations, changing up your pattern, not going to the same place at the same time or even um, you know, the same location at all. Switching things up so it's effectively you disappear from their consciousness. And that's what you're going to do adding the gray man principles of what you wear when you go out, what you have for your gear. Like I said, head to toe camouflage when you're living in a city makes you stand out far more than anything else. Wearing super tactical gear when everyone else is walking around in t-shirts and jeans or shorts on a regular day makes you stand out more than anything else. So in the 
gray man principles, you want to blend in with the surroundings. You want to look no different than anyone else out there, except for the fact that you have a plan and you're in the process of carrying it out versus everyone else is just sort of moving with the herd with no clear direction about where they're going or what they're going to do once they get to a location. Anyway, just some food for thought, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.